Okay, we're taking a little time off from Hayward Family Ministries of going through the Bible chapter by chapter while well, my daughter is at church business tonight. And I thought this would be the time, I said I was going to do it the other day, voting in the Bible. Notice I put voting in the Bible. We're going to look at the Bible. We're going to see what the Bible says. And if you've got a conflict of interest, you got a problem with God and the Bible and not me. I don't care what you like. I don't care what your rights are. We're going to look at what the Bible says. Voting and the Bible. You got it? Judgment seat of Christ is coming. I don't want you to get wood, hay, and stubble. So let's begin voting in the Bible. Number one. Let's look at the places in the Bible, shall we? Number one, vote. Zilch. There's no vote in the Bible. Number two. We'll get to a point through this, so just hang on. Voted. We voted. Ready? Zilch. A voter. Zilch. Votes. Plural. Zilch. Voting. Zilch. Ballot. Oh, God, be somewhere in the Bible that says ballot. Zilch. Vote. Voted. Voters. Votes. Voting. Ballot. In the Bible, zilch. We're going to move on. We're not going to stop there. Register. Ezekiel, I mean, excuse me, Ezra chapter 2, verse 62. Ezra 2, 62. And we're not going to look up all these scriptures. We're going to leave you to do something. And if you don't look up the scriptures and you get an opinion that's contrary to scripture, it is your fault, not my fault. So we're looking at register, register to vote. Ezra chapter 2, verse 62. These sought their registry among those that were reckoned by genealogy, but they were not found. Therefore were they as not as they polluted, put from the priesthood. So here's a group of men to come forward and say, hey, we're part of the priest. And this is also found in Nehemiah 7, verse 5 and 64. They sought the register. They didn't register to vote. They opened up the book and said, okay, Barzillai, 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 Barzillai. Um, Hadabad, 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 Koas, Koas, Koas. I don't see your name in the list, sorry. Almost like if you were to go in the voting book, all right, uh, well, I don't see your name in the list. You can't vote. So there's that one. President. Daniel. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. Verse 2. Daniel 2.2. Two. And the king commanded to call the magician. One right place. Daniel 2. Oh, excuse me. Daniel 6. Two. I apologize. Daniel 6. Two. I knew something was going on. Daniel 6. Two. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was the first, that the princes might give an account unto them, and the king should have no damage. So we've got three presidents. Daniel was the head of, of the presidents, but there was a king over the president. We're America. We're not going to. We're going to fight England. We're going to. We're going to rebel against England. We're going to have no king at all. 
then don't call yourself a biblical nation. Well, let's keep reading, shall we? we? Let's read the Bible. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And that spirit was God's spirit, the Holy Spirit. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Man, he wanted Daniel in charge of it all. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel. All right, we got presidents in the Bible. Daniel is one of them. Daniel is filled with the Holy Spirit. The other presidents are against the man of God who's filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 6. Daniel 6.6. 6. These presidents and the princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. And all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, counselors, and captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask any petition of any god or man for 30 days. We have presidents in the Bible. And this is it. This is the only president. One is a man of God, and the rest of the presidents are against the man of God and make a royal decree of we're not going to pray. Does that sound familiar? Are we allowed to openly pray in our public school system? Has the president ever, any of them, have they ever come up and say, no, 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 you can pray? Now, okay, but you see that prayer that the president said we're going to love, is that prayer to Mary? Is that pray to Inca? Is that pray to the Muslim? Is that a prayer? My, what about praying to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit in the Bible? When we have an office set apart in America, and Daniel chapter 6, the only place that office sets apart, and most of them are against the man of God. And most of them say, let's have a decree of no prayer. Sounds familiar. All right. Number nine. Republican. Found in the Bible. Zilch. Democrat. Found in the Bible. Zilch. Number 11. Senate. Senate, Psalms, Psalms, Psalms 105, 22. I'm not making this up. I'm reading the Bible, am I? Are you opening your Bible, trying to find a place in the Bible? Psalms 105, 22, King James 6011. Not President James 6011, King James. We have a Savior as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So, uh, Psalms 105, 22. To bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Those are Egyptian senators that were put ahead of, or Joseph was put ahead of, verse 17. So we have Babylonian presidents and we have Egyptian senators. Interesting. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. This is Bible. I sure would not want to go away from the Bible, would you? Acts chapter 5, verse number 21. When they heard that, they entered to the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. Here's the senate of the children of Israel, and they imprisoned the apostles and Christians for the word of God. I said the Jewish senate imprisoned the apostles and the Christians. And when we saw the other Senate in the Bible, the only two places the Senate in the Bible was Joseph being over the Senate of 
the Egyptians. Babylonian presidents, Egyptian Senate. Interesting. All right, number 12. The first king, Saul, 1 Samuel 9. Oh, we got the first king. All right. We had to have an election then. 1 Samuel chapter 9. There we go. Stolly found it. He's got it. Yeah, all right. Everybody open your Bible, son. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 17. 1 Samuel 9, 17. The first king. And when Samuel saw Saul, try to say that three times. And the Lord said unto him, Behold, the man whom I spake to thee of, the, the same shall reign over my people. They didn't vote. God says, Samuel, my prophet, that's the man I want you to, to anoint to be the leader of my nation. And the people weren't asked anything, and the people didn't have nothing to say about it. God said, that's the one. The second king, Samuel. 2 Samuel 16, 1. 1 Samuel 16, 1. This is the second king, David. First Samuel 61, this is the second king, David. And the Lord said to Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? They didn't try to impeach him. God says he's done. Fill thy horn with oil and go, I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king amongst his sons. Verse 13. 1 Samuel 16, 13, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, David. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. No one voted for David. God said, that's the man I want. There was no impeachment of Saul. God said, I'm done with Saul. Go get David. That's Bible. We're reading the Bible. We're studying the Bible. And you're angry with God. Not me. Lots. Lots. Let's look at Lot. Joshua 18.6. Joshua 18.6. Joshua 18, 6. Ye shall therefore describe the land into seven parts, and bring the description hither to me, that I may cast lots for you here and before the Lord our God. 18.10. And, and Joshua cast lots for them in Shiloh before the Lord, and there Joshua divided the land unto the children of Israel according to their division. There was no voting. Now, I don't know how they did the lots. I don't know if they drew straws. I don't know if they grabbed white and black marbles. I don't know how they did it. But it was not by voting. Whatever means of this lot that they've done, they put it to the full purpose of God. Let's say... They pick colored marble. All right, we got this piece of land. Whoever gets the yellow marble, put your hand in the bag. And God will have that hand grab a colored marble. And that colored marble, not by voting, but by God, would be set forth from what those children would get in a land grant. It's plain and simple. Jonah chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1. In Jonah chapter 1 verse 7. Jonah 1 7. We're casting lots. We're not voting. 
whoever got the str the str bleh, can't say it. whoever got the the short straw, God said you get the sh your short straw. Oh, I can't say that. Whoever whoever gets a longer straw, God would say, okay, that one gets the long straw. Not don't, God don't ask anybody's opinions. God doesn't ask for anybody's ideas. God doesn't say you say yay or nay. They cast lots. Jonah chapter 1, verse 7. And they said, everyone to his fellow, come, let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Now here they're in this big storm. Somebody's causing this storm. All right, God, who's doing it? All right, everyone get a piece of paper, write down who you think did it, we'll put it in the box. And the wrong man would have been chosen. Again, I don't know if it's a, the black marble, the roll the dice and whoever gets snake eyes or who gets the, the short straw or however they did the lots. It is not the opinion of the seamen. It is God that chose that lot to say, you're the one. Acts chapter 1. What would you do in America? I take whoever is running for office. How many parties? I would do straws or white black marbles. Whoever got the white marble, whoever got the, the shortest. But I, what we would do, this is what we would do. Acts chapter 1, verse 26, if we were a Christian nation, and they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Manassas, and he was numbered among the 11 apostles. All right, God, we have uh, Joseph and Moabit. Lord, one of these two men needs to take the office of Judas. We have no idea who. We got two men for an office. Sound familiar? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 11 apostles and decide. I reckon everyone cast votes. No. No. All right. In this bag, we have a bunch of marbles. The one that gets the black or the one that gets the white marble, the odd colored marble. And I don't know how they did. I'm using an example. That is going to be the disciple. Manassas or Manias puts his hand in the bag and God guides that hand to grab that marble, that short straw, the odd number, whatever they did. The cast lots, that lot, God said, that's the man I want. No one voted. No one went to register. It was left up to God. I say, if we were to do it in this nation, this Christian nation, we all get together and pray and set a date and say, Lord God, we got these two or three or four men, women. We want to know who you want to be the leader of this nation. Okay? Put your hands in a bag and grab. And he with the yellow marble, the blue marble, the, or gets the short straw, the, or the... That would be the one that God showed you. If we seriously prayed and we seriously honored God and seriously honored the Bible, which this nation doesn't, so it's not going to work anyway. I'm going to tell you again. I don't vote. I preach the gospel. Mark 16, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Throughout the book of Acts, they, they preach the Bible. They preach the word. They preach the gospel. Vote, zilch. Voted, zilch. Voter, zilch. Vote, zilch. Voting, zilch. Ballot, zilch. Republican, zilch. Democrat, zilch. How about the polls? Let's see what the polls have to say, shall we? Numbers 3. Numbers chapter 3. If you're angry, you're not angry at me. You're angry with God because God doesn't agree with you. Numbers chapter 3, we'll look at the poll. 
You are angry because I said that we should cast lots instead of votes. I have the right to vote. And you have the right to disobey the Bible. And you have the right to wood, hay, or stubble. And you have perfectly right, which I advise you not to, to be in complete rebellion. Remember I said voting and the Bible. Okay, let's look at the poll. Numbers 347. You mean that's in the Bible? Yeah, 347. Numbers. Thou shalt even take five shekels apiece by the poll. That's the first time that word shows up. After the shekel, all right. It's a head count. It's a head count. You count the people, and they're, you got to they got to give uh, five shekels. <clears throat> now that poll, Ezekiel forty-four. Ezekiel forty-four. I'm just showing you what the Bible says. Ezekiel forty-four. Ezekiel 44. I'm taking common words of election and I'm applying it to the Bible. Ezekiel 44, 20. Neither shall they shave their heads, nor suffer the locks to grow long. They shall only pull their heads. The poll in numbers is a head count. Yeah. Ezekiel, it's a haircut. Micaiah 1.16, a Bible book for many has never seen the light of day in the Old Testament. Micaiah 1.16, make thee bald, pull thee for thy delicate chin. It's a hair cunning. In the Bible, pull is a head count and cut in your hair. Majority. Majority. Majority to vote. Okay. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 13. What about the majority vote? Matthew 7, 13. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and abroad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go thereat. You want the majority rule? Majority to vote? The Bible says majority go into the destruction, into the hell. Bible-believing Christians are the minority. People who are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ are the minority. And those that serve the Lord Jesus Christ properly, according to the biblical, biblical stance, is even a minority of the minority. Election. Ooh, there we go. Romans 9. Romans 9. Election. Election. There we go. thou has got it now. Election. Romans 9. Romans 9, verse 11. 9, 11. Yeah, isn't that interesting? For the children not being born, neither done, this is Esau and Jacob, neither done good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election, that's the first time the word shows up in the Bible, might stand not of works for him that called. And it was said that the elder shall serve the younger. The election, God, and we'll look at it in a moment, God chose Jacob. Jacob ne never even ran. Esau never ran. They're in their mother's womb. And there's no voting and ballot. God says, that one right there, that infant baby in that womb, that's the one I choose. It's a foreknowledge. Romans 11. Romans 11. Verse 5. Even so then, at the present time, also there is a rendment, a rendment according to the election of grace. Verse 7. What then? 
Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. 28. 28. Romans 11, 28. Election. Nation of Israel. Jacob. As concerned in the gospel, the, the Jewish people, they are an enemy for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. The nation of Israel has been an election, chosen, picked out, not by vote of the United Nuts, not by the Gentiles, because they were never chosen Israel. God's election says, I choose Israel. You know who's doing all the voting and all the election and all the work of this study? Who chose the first king, Saul? God. Who chose the first king, David? David. God did. And when Saul sinned against God, God chose him to be put out. I can't think of the word. I said it before. And when it came to the second king of Israel, God says, I've chosen David. What were the means of choosing? Joshua for the land, we cast lots. Jonah, who is causing this trouble? We cast lots. The, the disciples saying, we need someone to fill Judas' spot. What do we do? We cast lots. And what's the Bible say? Vote. Zilch. Voted. Zilch. Voter. Zilch. Votes. Zilch. Voting. Zilch. Ballot. Zilch. Republican. Zilch. Democrats. Zilch. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.4. 1 Thessalonians 1.4. 1 Thessalonians 1.4. Knowing brethren, beloved, your election of God. God's doing the choosing. You know what America has done to Christian nation? They, they turned it over to the people through the choosing and not God. That's why I don't vote. You know what I'm praying for this election year? That God sets forth that the Antichrist will come, the church will be raptured, and then Jacob seven years of trouble, and we can get Jesus Christ coming in the time period to, to redeem Israel and to and to give them that new heart and God to, to, to remember their sins no more and set them up in the land of the millennium. You know, today, a lot of people, you know, they had the tax revolts and the tea parties and all that. It was Joseph during the taxes that brought Joseph and Mary for Jesus to be born in Bethlehem, according to the scripture. Yes, I am biblically correct when it comes to voting in the Bible. You're not. First Thessalonians 1 4. Second Peter. Second Peter 1 10. Second Peter 1 10. Second Peter 1 10. Wherefore rather, brethren, Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Chosen by God. All right, election. The idea of election and expressive of God's method of achieving his purpose for the world and for providence and grace. Though as benefits of character of the Bible as particularly history of redemption, especially in grace, goes to the heart of Scripture teaching. When God set up Saul, he asked for no man's opinion. And then when Saul sinned, and I can't think of that word right now, 
And when it came to the second king, David, God asked for no man's opinion. God said, Saul, you're out. Go anoint David with no one's opinion. Impeach. No one impeached Saul, God did. And then when it came to choice decision, they cast lots for the land in Joshua. They cast lots for the man to find out who caused the storm. And they cast lots who would be the next disciple. They asked no man's opinion, but they went to God. Equivalent words of the Old Testament and New Testament is chose, chosen, foreknown. And it's always based upon the foreknowledge of God. Even Calvin got this mixed up. In the Old Testament, as we as it will be seen, the special object of the divine election is Israel. Deuteronomy 4.37 and 7.7 and throughout various places in the Bible. But within Israel are special elections. So Israel is divine election of God. And even in, inside Israel, there is a special election. The tribe of Levi. And of the tribe of Levi, there's an election of the house of Aaron. And then there will be the election of the tribe of Judah for Jesus. And then there will be an election of David's throne for Jesus Christ. The New Testament term elect is frequently used both by Christ and by the apostles for those who have the for those who are heirs of salvation. When you vote in the world, how many people are you voting for are unsaved and reject God and his word in Jesus Christ? And in New Testament, the term of the elect goes to those that have heard the salvation through Jesus Christ. And if you elect a non-saved, unsaved individual, that goes against the New Testament teaching. Elect. Number one, the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold my servant to whom I upheld my elect, to whom my soul delighteth. Isaiah 42, 1. 1 Peter 2, 6. Number two, elect. Cyrus, who is called by God to be his shepherd, to work out his will, saying in Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built. To the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Isaiah 44, 28, 45, 1 through 4. Cyrus is who let the captives go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. Ezra 1, Jews of 3. You know how many people in America will not elect Jesus? God says, I elect Jesus. Who would elect someone that would stand for him for the nation of Israel to be Going back and rebuild. God did. Cyrus. Number three. When Jacob and Esau were born, we looked at that early in Romans. Jacob was elected for blessings and his descendants as the only nation which would be Israel chosen by God for his special favor. Amos 3 2 and Romans 9 11 through 13 again. And there's that elect of the children of Israel, but Jacob. Who elected Jacob? God. Who elected Cyrus? God. Who elected Jesus? God. Did God ask anyone's opinion? Did God ask anybody to, to cast your vote? No! Number four. When God again restores Israel into his blessing, it will be the remnant that will be chosen. For whom he calls his elect, Isaiah 65, 9, 15, and 22, Matthew 24, 22, 24, 31, Romans 11, 28. You know what nation is elected? America. No. Israel. My dirty United Nuts in New York City wouldn't even elect Israel. Who would vote for Israel? God. It's not called voting. It's called 
elect. Elect. In 1 Thessalonians 5.21, there are elect angels. Number six, election of persons to eternal life. That's me. Romans 8, 29 to 30, 33. 11, 5, and 7. Colossians 3, 12. 1 Thessalonians 1, 4. 2 Timothy 2, 10. Titus 1, 1. 1 Peter 1, 2. 5, 13. 2 Peter 1, 10. 2 John 13. How many people are elected into an office throughout the world who are not even saved? And yet, number six, the election of persons into eternal life. I have been elected by God through Jesus Christ. How many, how many Christians go, I vote? How many, how many of them know that they've been elected by God? That the Lord Jesus Christ has been elected by God. Cyrus was elected by God. Jacob was elected by God. Israel was elected by God. Angels are elected by God. So many angels are rejected, uh, elected by God. And saved people eternal life. Oh, you're going to worry about the Republicans and Democrats. Zilch. Zilch. Vote. Zilch. Vote in. Zilch. Voter. Zilch. Vote. Zilch. Voting. Zilch. Ballot. Zilch. Register a group of names that uh, for the priesthood. President. One good president, the other presidents were bad, and they were against the good president that was a man of God, and they said, let's have a call for no prayer. Senate. There was an Egyptian Senate, and there was a Jewish Senate, and the Jewish Senate were, were putting the apostles and disciples and Christians in jail. The first king Saul was chosen by God, and none of the people had any option. God didn't ask any of the people how they felt. God told Samuel, go anoint him. That's the one. And nobody impeached Saul. God says, I'm done with him. As a matter of fact, when David, the second king, is anointed by Samuel with no people voting, Saul, <coughs> the impeach, is still on the throne many years until David gets on the throne. How do we choose? Joshua chose lots for the land. The seamen chose lots and who is the, the rascal causing the damage? And the disciples chose Lot to fill in Judas's spot. And when you take a poll, it's a count in the heads and it's a haircut. My journey broad is the way that leads to destruction. Where did I leave off? The divine election in choosing and separating from others, we have three kinds of methods in Scripture. First is the election of individuals to perform some particular special service. Cyrus was elected to rebuild temple, the temple. The twelve apostles were chosen or elected to their office by Christ. The apostle Paul was chosen or elected as a vessel to the apostles to the Gentiles. Peter was a chosen vessel to both the Jews and to the Gentiles. Who, who, who voted for, for Peter to go to Cornelius? The Holy Spirit. Who voted for Paul to, to go on a missionary journey? The Holy Spirit. Not the people, not the Christians. The Holy Spirit says, separate me, Paul, and I forget, I think it's all, well, I have a work for them to do. At two times, the Holy Spirit told Paul, don't go there and don't go there. But can we vote on it? No. You don't know your Bible. You don't study to be approved of God, but I want to have a right. You hate the Bible, not me. The second kind of election, which we find in Scripture, is the election of nations and bodies of people. To be for the merciful purposes of God. 
the descendants of Abraham, the Jews, were chosen to receive special revelations of truth and to be the people of God. That is, to observe and uphold the worship of God and even to other Jews and Gentiles. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a particular people unto himself. The Lord delighted in the Israelite fathers, and he loved them, and he chose their seed after them, and all their people of their seed. And the second application is the terms elect and chosen in particular to the Jewish people. And that would move to the apostles, the disciples, and then the believing Jews and Gentiles during the church age. There's no greater nation above all nations elected and chosen an election of God. God don't care what you think. God doesn't have your opinion on Japan, the rising sun, or England, the sun never set upon the English Empire, or America, the God don't care. Israel is election. And chosen. For Christians, we're subjects also to the second kind of election. The election is a body of men and women to be visible people in the church of God in the world, endowed with particular privileges. They're chosen people. By faith and spiritual birth, these terms, although many become Christians, were mere profession. We are called of God through Jesus Christ. Peter and the, the scriptures I told you and Paul write, we are elected or election or chosen or set apart by Jesus Christ that we have or are the heirs of eternal life. And God never ever asked in 66 books, no man and no woman to vote it out. You know, okay, try it again. Vote, zilch, vote it, zilch. Voter, King James 1611 Bible, 66 books. Voter, zilch, vote, zilch, voting, zilch, ballot, zilch, Republican, zilch, Democrat, zilch. First king Saul, God chose, no one chose but God. Second king David, God chose, no one chose. Nation of Israel, God chose, no one chose. The church, the inheritors of eternal life, God chose, no one chose. President, there were presidents in Babylon and one right president, Daniel, he was preferred above all the presidents and they hated him, they despised him, they tried to get rid of him and the presidents that were against God said, let's get together and have no prayer. The Senate in Psalms 105 was the Egyptian Senate that was put under Joseph. And in Acts chapter 5 was the Jewish Senate that put the disciples and the apostles and Christians in jail. And you're going to call yourself a Christian nation when the foundation of your names. Oh, look at the scripture. Look at the scripture. Look at the scripture. Start to show thyself approved unto God. I don't vote. I preach the gospel. Mark chapter 16. Revelation chapter 3. You, and listen, you get mad at me, you unfriend me, you do whatever you want. I got this video to go against you. I got this video for God to go against you that I am teaching the King James Bible. Laodicea. The meaning is just people. A place of people. We the people. From the compound of Laos and Dyke, the Greek Laos, L-A-O-S, the people. The Greek Dyke, D-I-K-E, right, justice, the rights of the people. 
That is our church age. Right now, until the rapture comes. Let me read to you our church age. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. Unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans, that's us, write these things, say the amen, the faithful, God is faithful, the true witness, this church doesn't witness very much, and the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So that because thou art lukewarm, walking down the middle of the road, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You know what God says about this church age? <laughs> I didn't say that. King James Bible said that. Revelation chapter 3. That's what it said. Spew. Yeah. You ever get your mouth full uh, sometimes for every reason? You ever get your mouth full of salt water? <laughs> oh. Yeah. You ever get yourself a mouthful? You're outside, you take a sip of soda and it's hot. <laughs> oh, man. That's what God says about the church age. Because thou sayest, the church is saying, I am rich. Increase with goods. Look at all the people. Look at the big buildings. Look at the congregation. Look at our internet ministry. Look at our tapes. Look at our CD. Look how well I am. Look how great we are. Oh, we just so wonderful. Yeah, people don't like me because I preach the truth. Get in line. Take a number. Now serving number seven. Increase the good and have no had need of nothing. And know it's not, God says, know it's not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That's our church age of the people, the rights of the people. We're going to go vote. You make me sick. You don't study your Bible. And when you witness, you witness carnally. You don't witness with the word. You witness with programs, ideas, and movies, and junk. You are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. That's what God says about our church age. How you doing? We so wonderful, so great. I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. White raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. Listen, we're going to get gold at, at the judgment seat of Christ if we do right. White raiment is the righteousness of the saints. That the shame of thy nakedness is not fear. Anoint thy eyes with eye slap. You can't see, that thou mayest see. You're blind. Oh, we're doing right. God is pleased with you. Yeah. Look how great we are. You're, you're wretched, poor, miserable, and naked. That's what you are. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase and be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door, the church door. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. You know what God told Noah in the ark? Come in. God was in the ark and told Noah's family, come in. God in the church, in the church. I'm standing outside. I will come in. The difference between Noah's ark and the church, Noah's ark, God's in the ark, the church, God's outside. God shut that door in Noah's heart. God's waiting for you to open the door. I will come to him and will sup with him and he with me. Him that I overcome will sit with me on my throne. Overcome this, this insanity called the church age. Sit with me on the throne even as I overcame. And sit down with my father in his throne. He that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit, Holy Spirit, says unto the church. There it is. There it is. I gave to it on the King James Bible. 
I'm going to put this document on my on our family website so you can download it. Vote, zilch. Voted, zilch. Voter, zilch. Votes, zilch. Voting, zilch. Ballots, zilch. Republican, zilch. Democrat, zilch. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness.